Howdy, cowpokes. It's Mr. Roderick here in the music bunker high atop Mount Clemens. And today, as you can tell by my accent, we're going to learn some cowboy songs. Cowboys are an important part of our country's history, and their songs are an important part of our culture. So we should know about them again. But before you start learning cowboy songs, you have to know about the cowboy way of life and the history of the cowboys. So I want to ask you some questions. Do you know these cowboy words? How about spurs? You know what they are? How about reins? How about a bridle? How about a saddle? How about stirrups? How about a saddle horn? How about a lasso, or a lasso, or a hula hand? How about chaps? How about 10 gallon hats? How about coolies? How about, what's a draw? You know what a draw is? Not what I'm gonna do back here, but a draw. It's part of a terrain. Hmm. How about a bandana? Do you know what a cow puncher is? How about paint or pinto? How about dogie? That's an important one. And we're going to learn about Old Dan. Actually, there are two Old Dans in these songs. One of them is an old guy that lies a lot. And the other is a kind of a horse. So get, let's get ready to learn about cowboys. Before we do that, though, let's learn about these cowboy words we talked about, okay? And I think the best thing for me to do is to draw you a picture. The first cowboys lived in Mexico, way back when the Spanish arrived in the Americas and built ranches to raise the cattle. Horses were imported from Spain and put to work on the ranches. Mexico's native cowboys were called vaqueros. Cowboys in the United States had their heyday in the mid-1800s when the railroads built tracks into the west. Cowboys were a hard-working bunch. They typically wore large hats with wide brims to protect them from the sun, boots to help them ride horses and bandanas to guard them from the dust. Some wore chaps on the outside of their trousers to protect their legs from sharp cactus needles and rocky terrain. On the ranches, cowboys shared bunkhouses with each other for entertainment some sang songs, played the guitar, or harmonica, or wrote poetry. Cowboys were referred as, to as cowpokes, buckaroos, cowhands, and cowpunchers. Work days lasted for about 15 hours. Cattle drives usually began in the spring after roundup, as grass was available. Cowboys would gather all the cattle from the ranches in Texas and head them north to the railroad depots. A 12-man crew could manage a herd of about 2,000 to 3,000 head. The trail boss was the ultimate authority on the trail, like the captain of a ship, and was paid $100 to $125 a month. Of the rest of the crew, the cook was the most important, earning about $60 per month. The chuck wagon, sometimes drawn by oxen, but usually by mules, carried food, utensils, a water barrel, the cook served beef and bison steak, chuck wagon chicken, that's bacon, pico strawberries, those are beans, sourdough bullets, those are biscuits, and cowboy coffee. The cook was usually an old cowboy who maybe knew a little bit about cooking. There were nine or ten wranglers or drovers. The drive would cover about 10 to 15 miles a day. They'd start off in the morning and take a break at noon for lunch and to give the cattle a, some time to eat and drink. A drive up to western Kansas would take between 25 and 100 days. The major cause of stampedes on the herd was lightning, but the herd could be spooked by any number of sights, smells, and noises. The first cattle drives on the legendary Chisholm Trail headed north out of the Rio Grande near Brownsville, crossed the Red River, and continued to Dodge City in Abilene, Kansas. The trail was not one fixed route, really. As one historian said, trails originated wherever a herd was shaped up and ended up wherever a market was found. A thousand minor trails fed the main route. 
The era of the cattle drive was at its peak for only about 20 years from after the Civil War until the coming of the railroads to Texas made the long trek to northern markets unnecessary. But it has left us with a legacy of images that will be with us for generations. Sunburned cowboys in their distinctive chaps and wide-brimmed hats, clouds of dust kicked up by bawling cattle, wheeling and darting quarter horses, keeping the critters in line, and the crusty chuck wagon cook making biscuits in a Dutch oven over an open fire. The cattle drive, more than any other thing, epitomizes the romanticism of the old West. Now the first song we're going to sing today, Cowpokes, is a song called I Ride an Old Paint. Most of these songs that we're going to sing today come from a great book called Songs of the Wild West, published by Simon and Schuster. It's a Metropolitan Museum of Art book, and the arrangements are, are by a guy named Dan Fox. And it's got all kinds of great songs in it and pictures of what the Old West was like way back in the day. Here's that picture of the chuck wagon. This is called a Dutch oven, I do believe. It's what they used to cook bacon and beans in. The song we're going to sing today is called I Ride in Old Paint. Look at those chaps. And look at that cowboy trying to round up a stray doggie. Anyway, we'll look more at that book a little bit later. But right now, let's sing. This song has verses and a refrain, and the refrain is the part that's always the same every time you sing it, and it's going to be easy for you to pick up if you don't know this song. So as soon as you learn the refrain, you best be singing along, cowpoke. Yep. Here we go. I ride an old paint, and I lead an old dan. I'm going to Montana to throw the hula hand. They feed in the coolies, they water in the draw. Their tails are all matted, their backs are all raw. Ride around, little doggies, ride around real slow. You're fiery and snuffy and raring to go. Snuffy. There's a word. I think that's when cows make this sound. Get all worked up. I don't really know if they make that sound. Anyway, here's the second verse. Old Bill Jones had two daughters and a song. One went to Denver, the other went wrong. In his wife, she died in a pool room fight. And still he keeps singing from morning to night. Ride around, little doggies, ride around real slow. You're fiery and snuffy and rare to go. Snuffy. And I don't know about old Bill Jones or what his life was like. Don't ask him what a pool room fight is. Ask your mom. Here we go. Here's the third verse. When I die, take my saddle from the wall. Put it on my pony and lead him from the stall. Put my bones on his back and point us to the west. And we'll ride the prairies that we love the best. Ride around, little doggies, ride around real slow. You're fiery and snuffy and raring to go. The 
This next song is a famous old cowboy song called My Homes in Montana. This one doesn't have a refrain, so you just have to learn all the words, but it's easy if you sing it over and over again like the cowboys did around the campfire every night after a long day of punching cattle. Now they didn't really punch, they didn't walk up and go, hey, doggy. They didn't do that. But punching cattle meant that they were herding them on their way down the trail. What was I going to sing? It's called My Homes in Montana. That's it. My homes in Montana I wear a bandana My spurs are of silver My pony is gray When out on the ranges My luck never changes With foot in the stirrup I gallop away When far from the ranches I chop the pine branches To heap on my campfire as daylight grows pale when I have partaken of beans and of bacon I whistle a cheery old song of the trail can you whistle? Now here's how you whistle you go on go on then you make your lips as little as you can hey first it'll sound like this that's no good then after a while you go Oh, there's a little whistle there. And you can whistle breathe, going out, breathing out, or breathing in. So try whistling along with me, in or out. Here you go. Good job, cowpokes, of whistling around the campfire.